was just straightening out the cherry blossom quilt a little bit. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lori. Today is Build a Block Wednesday. Today we are going to make a lovely a pinwheel nine patch. Sorry, I had a brain glitch there for a moment. I am using bonus triangle blocks and I will show you two ways that we did this. We did it with all the same pinwheels and we did it with, I did it with mixed up pinwheels from whatever sets of four I had. So let me show you. Oh wait, I have a little friend helper here. Come here, Nug. Oh, he's being difficult. Well, come here. Anyway, let's go ahead and watch. Ever notice that fuzzies stick to design boards no matter what color you've made them? Uh, since we're doing pinwheels, let's talk a little bit about pinwheels. Because pinwheels, when you're making five of them, they should all go the same, the same direction. Because depending on how you sew them and lay them out, they can spin two different directions. And it wasn't until somebody pointed this out on another video that I was like, holy cow, they can spin two different directions, counterclockwise or clockwise. You can mix them up if you want, but I prefer to have all mine going the same way so it doesn't look like there's something mm, not piece right. So that'll be a decision I have to make as we go along. So they're all the same, just saying. Well, now that I have these all laid out, and I apparently prefer the counterclockwise mo movement, I'm going to do some speed piecing. The great thing about these blocks is that when you flip them together, because there's a seam, they nest together. And I'm sewing these in pairs. I'm doing the top, and then I am doing the bottom half of the pair. So even though I'm not a big fan of webbing, this is one of those times where I'm going to use it to my advantage. And I can feel those lock in and shove it through. You can also make these and then trim them afterwards. That's a different lesson for a different day. Now, you know I'm not a big fan of webbing, but I have cut these apart. After I string them through the machine, I cut them apart in pairs. And when I take them to the ironing board, I'm going to flip one up and one down, and then I'm going to press them in opposite directions. So one will go up, one will go down. That way the, the seams are opposite, and I can actually use that webbing to my advantage when I am sewing the pairs together. Just a second while I roll over to my ironing mat, and I do some pressing. Okay, everything is now ironed in pairs, and it's time for me to speed piece the blocks together. Now, because we ironed these pairs, one going up and one going down, when I flip them together, they nest. So this should be a fairly quick process. All I have to do is line it up, make sure they're nested together nicely, and sew them together. It is time for the pinwheel moment of truth. Now, for lots of years, I refused to do this because I thought it was silly to unsew what I had just sewed. So, I have these web together. Let me take my, I do keep my little sheath on my seam ripper. I undo my webbing and then I'm going to undo the three straight, three or four straight st stitches 
on each side. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, those are so small. What does it matter? I saw Eleanor Burns do this. And I that was the moment I was converted over. So let me do the other side. I got those three. And it's just the straight little stitch. You can pull it, you can twist it, you can do it however you want. But those taking out those three little stitches makes a world of difference. So now I can lay it down flat and my seams will sort of swirl around and it will, and she does this mush thing and I like that. So it makes the seams swirl around and it makes a little pinwheel in the middle. And then when I take it to the ironing board, and I'm gonna show you this other example. When I take it to the ironing board, it doesn't have to be a perfect pinwheel in the middle, but when I take it to the ironing board and I press it, it presses it so much flatter than if you don't take out those three tiny stitches on each side of the seam and make those pinwheels swirl. So that is the best trick, mush, 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 with a pinwheel that I know. I'll be back in a moment to assemble the rest of the block. A little thought on this technique. Small pinwheels have the same amount of stitches as the big, and you cannot, you cannot overpick. That was one of the reasons I was hesitant to do this. And you can approach it from the inside which might even be easier. You give it a little tug, stick your seam ripper in there, and it stops at that cross seam. You can't over pick it. You'll know if you haven't picked it enough. Turn it around, give it a little yoink. Give it a little pick. And then, oh, I see I need one more stitch out of there. And you can tell. You can't overpick this. So don't worry that your block is gonna fall apart or anything like that, because you can't. But if you don't do that, you end up with this hum humongous lump of stuff in the middle and your pinwheels will never lay flat. Once you do that, you will never go back. And I will take this over to the ironing board and I will put the iron on it and give it a shot of steam. Yes, I like steam. And then I won't move it back and forth, just and then I'll turn it over and do it again. Now I've picked out a couple possibilities. I do like rooting around in the bins and picking things out as we go. But today, because I'm making four of these blocks, I decided to just pick out things that I had enough of. So here's a possibility. Let's see how this looks on camera for a nice background. It's not bad. And here's another possibility. Let's see how this one looks. That's not bad either. I like that first one better. And then I have a third possibility. It's just a plain tan. Sometimes it is nice to audition things and make sure it's what you want. I think I'm going to go with my first choice. I'll be back in a minute after I assemble this. This is a 12 inch block and I picked a few things a few choices to see if I liked it or not. The tan flowers. It's always nice to have choices. That looks okay on the camera. Then I have a nice light yellow. Oh, put it on the wrong thing. The very light yellow. I think I like that one better. So, let me put this together. Be right back. 
And here are the two blocks that have the five matching pinwheels, the small block that has the non-matching pinwheels, and the 12 inch block that has the non-matching pinwheels. As always, thank you for watching. See you for Blab Fest Friday. Thank you.